by Virginia Woolf, with additional commentary by Carol Mosley Braun, Tony Morrison, and Janet Moss. <laughs> puzzle why no woman wrote a word of extraordinary literature when every other man, it seems, was capable of a song or sonnet. <laughs> <laughs> to find out more, I went to the shelves with a history stand and took down one of the latest, Professor Trevelyan's History of England. Professor Trevelyan concludes, Shakespeare's women do not seem wanting in personality and character. <laughs> One might even go further and say that in all the works of all the poets from the beginning of time, women have first like beacons. Antigone, Cleopatra, Rosalind, Clytemnestra, Desdemona. The names flock to mind. And they are certainly not women lacking in personality and character. Indeed, if women had no existence save in the fiction written by men, one would imagine her to be a person of the utmost importance. Mm, heroic and mean. Splendid and sordid, infinitely beautiful, and hideous in extreme. As, as great as, as a man. man. Some think even greater. But, but this, this is woman in fiction, where defining herself as opposed to being defined by others is the greatest challenge she faces. In fact, as Professor Trevlin points out, she was locked up, beaten, and flung about the room. Imaginatively, she is of the highest importance. Practically, she's completely insignificant. She pervades poetry from cover to cover. She is all but absent from history. Some of the most inspired words, some of the most profound thoughts in literature fall from her lips. In real life, she could hardly read, but scarcely spell, and was the property of her husband. By no possible being could middle class women with nothing but brains and character at their command have taken part in any one of the great movements which brought together constitutes the historian's view of the past. What I find most deplorable, I thought, looking about the bookshelves again, is that nothing is known about women before the 18th century. I have no model in my mind to turn about this way or that. Here I am asking why women did not write poetry in the Elizabethan age, and I'm not even sure how they were educated. Whether they were taught to write. Whether they had sitting rooms to themselves. How many women had children before they were 21? <laughs> what in short they did from eight in the morning? late at night. Mm -hmm. It would have been extremely odd had one of them suddenly written the great plays of Shakespeare, I concluded. And I thought of an old gentleman who's dead now, <laughs> or was a bishop, I think, who declared that it was impossible, impossible for any woman, past, present, or to come, to, to have, have the genius of Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. He also told a lady who applied to him for information that uh, cats do not, as a matter of fact, go to heaven. <laughs> Though they have, he added, souls of a sort. <laughs> how much thinking those old gentlemen used to say, one, how the borders of ignorance shrank back at their approach. Cats do not go to heaven. Women cannot write the plays of Shakespeare. Be that as it may, I couldn't help but think as I looked at the works of Shakespeare on the shelf that the bishop was right, at least in this. It would have been impossible. Completely and entirely. For any woman to have written the plays of Shakespeare in the age of Shakespeare. Let me imagine, since facts are always so hard to come by, what would have happened had Shakespeare had a wonderfully gifted sister called Judith. Shakespeare himself went very probably to the grammar school where he may have learned Latin. Ovid, Virgil, Horace, and the elements of grammar and logic. He was a wise boy. Married a woman in the neighborhood who bore him a child rather quicker than what was right. That escapades and his biggest fortune in London. He had, it seemed, a taste for the theater. Very soon he got work in the theater, in the theater, became a successful actor, and lived at, at the, the hub, hub of, of the, the universe. universe. Meeting everybody, knowing everybody, practicing his art, exercising his wits, and even getting palace, even getting access to the palace of the queen. Meanwhile, his extraordinarily gifted sister, let us suppose, remained at home. She was as adventurous, as imaginative, as a god to see the world as he was. But she was not sent to school. She had no chance of learning grammar or logic, let alone to read Horace or Virgil. Mm. She picked up a book now and then, one of her brothers, perhaps, 
and read a few pages. But then her parents came in and told her to mend the stocking or mind the stew and not moon about with books and papers. They would have spoken sharply but kindly, for they were substantial people who knew the conditions of life for a woman and loved their daughter. Indeed, more likely than not, she was the apple of her father's eye. Perhaps she scribbled some pages in a loft on the sly, but she was careful to hide them or set fire to them. Soon, however, before she was out of her teens, she was to be betrothed to the son of the neighboring wool stapler. She cried out, This marriage is hateful! And her dad was severely beaten by her father, but then he ceased to scold her. He begged her instead not to hurt him, to not shame him in this matter of marriage. He would give her a chain of beads or a fine petticoat, and there were tears in his eyes. How, How could she, she disobey him? him? How, How could she break his heart? heart? The force of her own gift alone drove her to it. She made up a small parcel of her belongings, let herself down by a rope one summer's night, and took the road to London. She was not 17. If there is a book you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. Mm. Mm. The birds that sang in the hedge were not more musical than she was. She had the quickest fancy, a gift like that of her brothers for the tune of words. Like him, she had a taste for the theater. She stood at the stage door. Uh, I want to act, and <laughs> laughed in her face. The manager, a fat, loose-lipped man, guffawed. <laughs> he said something about poodles dancing and woman acting. No woman. He, he said, said, could possibly be an actress. He, he hinted. hinted. You can imagine what. She could get no training in her craft. Could she even seek her dinner at a tavern or roam the streets at midnight? Yet her genius was for fiction and lusted to feed abundantly upon the lives of men and women and the study of their ways. At last, for she was very young and oddly like Shakespeare the poet in her face, with the same gray eyes and rounded bras, at last, Negrin, the actor manager, took pity. pity. On her. She soon found herself with child by that gentleman. And so, who shall measure the heat and violence of the poet's heart when caught and entangled in a woman's body? Kill herself on the winter's night. And lies now at some crossroads where the only bus is not stop. This, I think, is how the story would have gone if a woman in Shakespeare's day had had Shakespeare's genius. <laughs> <laughs> but, for my part, I agree with the deceased bishop. It is unthinkable that any woman in Shakespeare's day should have had Shakespeare's genius. For genius like Shakespeare's is not born among laboring, uneducated, servile people. Yet geniuses of a sort existed among women as it existed among the working classes. But, but certainly, certainly it never got itself on paper. paper. When, however, one reads of a witch being dubbed, of a woman possessed by devils, of a wise woman selling herbs, of a woman raped or enslaved, or even of a very remarkable man who had a mother, then I think we are on the track of a lost novelist. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I would venture to guess that Anon, who wrote so many poems without signing them, was actually a woman. This may be true or it may be false. Who, who can say? But what is true in it, it seems to me, is that any woman born with a great gift in the 16th century would certainly have gone crazed. Mm. For it needs little skill in psychology to know that the conditions of her life were hostile to the state of mind which is needed to set free whatever is in the brain. Mm -hmm. For woman, I think these difficulties were infinitely formidable. In the first place, to have a room of her own, let alone a quiet room or a soundproof room, was out of the question. Such material difficulties were kindred, sure, but much worse were the immaterial. Yet differences of the war of which men of geniuses have found so hard to bear was, in her case, not indifference, but hostility. The world did not say to her as it said to them, write if you choose, it makes no difference to me. The world said with a guffaw, write, what's the good of your writing? Telling our stories is a revolutionary act which can be met with hostility, but also love, understanding, transcendence, and community. Mm. I asked myself, looking again at the spaces on the shelves for books that were not there, whether it would be ambitious beyond my daring to suggest to the students of prestigious colleges, Emory, Oglethorpe, Kennesaw, Spelman, just to name a few, Ooh. that they should rewrite history. 